with me in the book of Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24. As we look at the chaos that's going on all over the world, as we look, beloved, at what seemingly sees, seems so confusing, people are asking, and I mean a lot of people are asking, what in the world is going on? What's going on? Well, God tells us what's going on. And if we realize that, if we realize that, we can be prepared. I want you to look with me in Matthew chapter 24. I'm going to begin reading with verse 1. I'm going to read through verse 8, the words of Jesus. And the Bible says, And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. I believe when Jesus spoke those words, I believe there was a sadness in his voice. But read on. And, he, and as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilences, and earthquakes in divers places. Now look at verse 8. All these are the beginning of sorrows. The title of my message is Welcome. Welcome to the beginning of sorrows. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you and praise you. I give you glory, Lord, for the ability to be here. God, with all these folks that I love so much, I thank you, Father, for each and every one. And God, for these visitors that you've sent our way. God, Lord, thank you so much. Father, they haven't come to hear me. They've come to hear from you. So I ask you, Lord, I pray, Father, that, God, you'll take control right now. God, that you'll direct me in my thoughts, that, God, thy spirit might lead me and guide me. I confess to you, Lord, that I am nothing, and I can do nothing. And, God, I lean solely upon you. And I pray, Father, that thy word might come forth true. And God, Lord, that it, thy spirit might pierce the hearts of each and every one. And Lord, that God's needs here might be met. That, Lord, thy will might be done in every heart, in every soul, in every life. In Jesus Christ's name, Lord, we do pray. Amen. In Matthew 24, the disciples were reveling in the, the, the pride of man. There was the temple, one of the seven wonders of the world. And beloved, they were boasting in, 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 their, their, uh, in pride at, at the beauty of that building. They were showing him the man, magnificent architecture uh, of the buildings of the temple. I can almost hear them. Look at this, Lord. Look how great this dwelling is. Look at the detail. Look at, look at the structure. And oh, so full of pride they were, beloved, at what man had done for God. 
for God. But Jesus, Jesus busted their bubble with just, just a few words. Jesus said, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, truly I say unto you, there shall not be one stone left upon another that shall not be thrown down. In other words, Jesus said, all this that you are so proud of, all of this will come to naught. It will all be destroyed. I believe, beloved, a solemn hush fell upon those disciples as they heard the words of Jesus. For to them, beloved, the destruction of the temple could only mean one thing. It could only mean the end of the world, of their world. So when they got back to the Mount of Olives, they asked him, they said, Lord, tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And folks, that's when Jesus began to tell them what to look for. He said the first thing you should, you should look for is the beginning of sorrows. The beginning of sorrows. And he began, he began, beloved, to, to name certain things that would, would come to pass before the end came. He said, he said, there will come false Christ in many places. He said, don't be deceived by them. He said, there, there, you'll, be, you'll hear of wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation, Kingdom against kingdom. And that word kingdom means, uh, it means uh, uh, ethnic group against et ethnic group. He said there will be famines and pestilences and, and earthquakes in divers places. He said all these things are the beginning of sorrows. They're the labor pains for what is coming. And like labor pains, they will, beloved, increase in, in frequency. They will increase in, in intensity as the end draws nearer. Folks, I'm telling you, there is no doubt that we are living in the beginning of sorrows. In the beginning of sorrows. The, the same thing that Jesus prophesied would come is here is here. Listen, we've got false Christ rising up all over the world. In, in, in Israel, a young rabbi came on the scene and many over there are saying that he is Messiah. In fact, I heard just this week that the beloved, there, there, there is a Palestinian Jesus over there, they're saying. A Palestinian Jesus. In America, we've got preachers, beloved, who are, are teaching heresy. In the name of Jesus, they are teaching heresy. Heresy. Saying, beloved, that they are followers of Jesus, yet, beloved, preaching a different Jesus than this book preaches or this book teaches. Wars and rumors of wars. Folks, they're fighting in Ukraine. Russia and Ukraine. Israel is fighting Hamas in Gaza. The Houthis in Yemen, beloved. Hezbollah in Lebanon. Iraq, Iraqi and Syrian terrorists. And, and behind it all is Iran. Is Iran. Rumors of war. We've got them. We've got them. Beloved, the whole world is just waiting for China to go against Taiwan. They are threatening Taiwan. North Korea, beloved, is threatening South Korea. American troops are being, are being attacked in Syria, beloved, every day. Every day. Every day. Putin is threatening NATO. 
I heard, I, I read where Sweden, beloved, has told its citizens, be ready for war. War is coming. And they're saying that Putin is going to invade. Rumors of wars. Almost the whole world, beloved, is at war or threatening war. And I've just told you just a small amount of, of what's going on. They're talking, beloved, they're telling us that because of the wars, that droughts and flood, and, excuse me, because of the wars and the droughts and the floods, that there is coming to America a food shortage, a food shortage, and to the world, and to the world. Do I need to talk about pestilence after COVID? Do I need to talk about earthquakes in diverse places? If you watch the news, you know. You know. Folks, it would take a fool not to see that we, beloved, are living in that time that Jesus warned his disciples of. The beginning of sorrows. The beginning of sorrows. And that marks, beloved, the soon coming of the end. Now let that sink in. The beginning of sorrows marks the soon coming of the end. And, beloved, that marks the soon coming of Jesus. Of Jesus. We are seeing these things happen, beloved, all over the world in an unprecedented way. All at the same time. It's never happened like this before. But it's happening. It's happening. Oh, the birth pains are here. And they're growing in frequency and growing in intensity. Telling us, beloved, the end is near. Telling us that Jesus is coming soon. But why? Now I'm gonna be now I'm gonna get into something and, and, and you're gonna think I'm talking in circles, but I'm trying to show you how all of this connects. Why, beloved, are we experiencing the birth pains now? Why, beloved, is the end coming soon? Why is Jesus' return, beloved, almost at hand? The answer is one small word sin. Sin. Now, what is sin? Folks, sin is rebellion against God. It's disobeying God. It's denying God. Isn't it a shame that you have to define sin to people in this modern age? But they don't know what it is. They don't understand anymore what sin is. Beloved, it's, it's, it's rebellion and disobeying God, denying God. Sin is engulfing this world, beloved, such as it's not since the days of Noah. And we know what happened in the days of Noah. God took them all away. In fact, Jesus said in Matthew 24, verse 37 and 38, let me read that to you in this same chapter. Jesus said this. He said, but as the days of Noah were, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them away. So shall the coming of the Son of Man be. What brought on the flood? Sin, sin, sin did. God saw their rebellion. God saw their disobedience. God saw, beloved, their denial of him. Beloved, he, he, he saw these things until the imaginations of their heart became evil continually and God said, that's enough. So he destroyed the world. And I believe he did it with tears in his eyes. He destroyed the world, beloved, because of their sin. 
And here we are fast approaching that point again. You know, we've reached the point that many deny that sin exists. Did you know that? We're talking about the intellectuals. They're teaching this, by the way, in our college, that everything is relevant, that there is no black and no white, no right and no wrong. Beloved, that's what they're teaching. That's what, in other words, there is no sin. And then the others turn around and they call evil good and good evil. Oh, it's evil. It's evil to deny a woman her right to destroy her child before it's born. That's evil, they say. Excuse me. I said it backwards. It's good, they say, for a woman to destroy her child before it's born. It's evil to spare that child's life. That's what they're saying. That's what they're saying. And these, beloved, are not imbeciles. These are educated people. It's evil to speak out against homosexuality. It's good for a man to, to, to lie with man and woman with woman. That's good, they say. So we'll counsel you if you don't agree with that. We'll counsel you. I could go on and on and on, but it's obvious. Beloved, this wicked world don't know what sin is anymore. And why don't they? Why don't they? Because, beloved, they have rejected God. They have rejected God's word. They have denied even that God exists. So what do you have? What do you have when you rebel against God, deny Him, and disobey Him? What do you have? You have multitudes of false Christ appearing. You have wars and rumors of war. You have famines and earthquakes and pestilence. You have the beginning of sorrows, beloved, in preparation for the wrath of God to fall on this earth. Let me ask you, why do we have wars? Because of sin. Because of pride. Because of, of greed. Because of lust for, for what others have. Because of the lust for power. You know, in the Bible, even when God told Israel to go and war against this people, it was sin was the cause. Because those people had gotten so wicked and had done such wrong against God and against Israel that God commanded them to go to war. It was sin that caused it. Why do false, I mean, why, why do these things happen, beloved? Why, why do false Christ appear? Because of pride, the desire to deceive, the desire for money and fame. And power. Why, why, why does famine and earthquakes and pestilence, why do they come? Even those things are caused by sin. By sin. You see, sin, beloved, the Bible says sin causes all creation to groan. To groan. Beloved, the more sin, the more Creation groans. The more earthquakes, the more, more natural catastrophes come. It's, you read it. It's in your Bible. The whole creation groaneth because of sin. Pestilences. You know, there was no sickness or disease before sin entered this world. There was none. All you folks who are sick, I've been sick this past week. All you folks who, 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 who have ailments, who have hurts, it's because of sin. 
Not sin, maybe not your sin, but sin. The sin, beloved, that came into this world brought disease and sickness and hurt and pain and sorrow. So the more sin increases, the more wars, the more deception, the more famines, the more pestilence, the more earthquakes we have. And as we look and we see all these things growing, beloved, around us in intensity and frequency, we know, beloved, it's because sin abounds more than it ever has before. More beloved since the days of Noah or days of Noah anyway. So, and that's where we are. That's where this world is. We are in the beginning of sorrows because this world has rejected God. This world has rejected, beloved, uh, uh, God's word because this world has disobeyed God. They have, beloved, rejected their creator. They've rejected, beloved, the one that, 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 that came to save them. They have rejected the life giver. And the only thing, beloved, left for them is for God's wrath to fall on this earth in what the Bible calls the tribulation. The tribulation coming folks and I'm telling you this with tears in my eyes it's coming the birth pains are here but even beloved many of the lost people are seeing it and saying what in the world the world is coming to that's what they're saying the world's coming to an end see the birth pains are a warning to the world they're a warning but beloved they are, they're more than that they're a reminder to us that our God still cares about us that he cares about you folks the Lord was under now get this the Lord was under no obligation to warn us of anything do you know, beloved, that God could just snap his fingers and this world be plunged into the darkness and destruction of the tribulation? That's all. That's all he had to do. But God, beloved, takes no delight in the death of the wicked. The Bible says he is not willing that any should perish. He doesn't want anyone to perish. Oh, listen, he will judge sin. He must because he is holy and he is a righteous God. But he's also a God of mercy and a God of grace and a God of love. That's why he sent Jesus. You ever understood or questioned why? God sent his son to this old wicked, evil world to be uh, mistreated, to be laughed at, to be mocked, to be nailed to a tree. Why did God do that? Why did he do that? He did it because he loved us so much. He loved us so much that he, beloved, didn't want anyone to die for their sins. You see, he knew that the wages of sin is death. And he knew that someone must pay our sin debt. So he sent his own son, beloved, to pay it on that cross for us, for you and for me. Jesus came, took a body of flesh so he could die in our place, so he could take the wrath of God for us. The Bible says he is the propitiation for our sin. And that word propitiation means the recipient of the wrath of God. He took God's wrath. Every bit of wrath that God had for my sin, for your sin, Jesus took it. On himself. She died on that cross. 
There on that cross, beloved, all our sins were laid on him and all God's wrath was poured on him. And all we have to do, all we have to do is repent of our sin, believe on him and receive him as Lord and Savior and he will save us. Wash our sins away and we'll be born again, born anew. So it's a choice. It's a choice that everyone has to make. To believe and receive Jesus for the forgiveness of sin and everlasting life. Or you can choose sin. You can choose sin over salvation. For 2,000 years, 2,000 years we've been given that opportunity but what has the world done? What have they done? For the most part, they've rejected him, they've denied God, and they have chosen sin. He died for them. He died for them, yet they reject him. He bore their sins, yet they refuse him. He reaches out to them with arms of acceptance and love, beloved. Employ them to come and take of the water of life freely. Yet, they, yet beloved, they, they refuse him. They curse him. And today, beloved, they get angry even if you speak his name. No. God owes us no warning. God owes us no warning. Yet despite all the evil we've done to him, he warns us with the beginning of sorrows. Every time, listen to me, every time you turn on your news and you hear of wars and rumors of wars, it's God saying, I still love you. It's God saying, I'm warning you. I'm warning you. Every time you hear about another earthquake, natural disaster, and boy, we are hearing about them every week, every week, every week. Sometimes more than once a week, beloved, we're hearing. Every time you hear about it, it's God saying, I love you. I love you. I don't want you to perish. Won't you take heed to the warning? Every time you hear COVID or pestilence or disease, every time you hear them say a world food shortage is coming and they're talking about it big time, know, know, beloved, that God God is saying to you, I'm coming. My wrath is coming. It's coming. But I love you, so I warn you. I warn you. You say, preacher, I can't deny what you said. I've seen it. I, I see the beginning of sorrows. I believe it's God's warning us. I believe it's God loving us. But what can we do? Preacher, the world as we know it is about to end. What can we do? I want you to listen very carefully. If you are saved, truly saved, if you've re truly received Christ as your Lord and Savior and he has done a work in you, Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In other words, Jesus said, I've got this. I've got you. I've got you, Christian. I've got you, Christian. What does that mean, preacher? 
It means, beloved, before his wrath falls on this earth, listen to me, he will snatch you out in what we call the rapture. The rapture. Jesus said, if I go away, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there ye may be also. I'm telling you, folks, I'm telling you. I've studied this thing now for 40, 50 years. Before the rapture, excuse me, before the tribulation begins, God's going to take his people home. Whoa! We're going home. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trump shall sound, and the dead in Christ shall rise first, and we that are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the air to meet the Lord, in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So let not your heart be troubled. Jesus said, He said, if I go away, I will come again and receive you unto myself. First Thessalonians 1.10, he says, To wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which has delivered us from the wrath to come. We've been delivered, amen? 2 Thessalonians chapter, excuse me, 1 Thessalonians 5, 9. For God hath not appointed us to wrath. He's talking to Christians. Us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, the last verse in that chapter. Therefore, Paul says, wherefore comfort one another with these Christian, if you got oil in your lamp when he comes, he will rapture you out before the wrath of God falls on this earth. Whoa, we all will all be shouting and thanking and praising God right now. Meanwhile, meanwhile, you are to watch be ready for his return. Matthew 24, same chapter, verse 42. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. In other words, Christian, believe and watch for his coming. Be serving him when he comes. Be obeying him when he comes. Be a witness to others when he comes. Be ready to stand before your God. Be ready. If you've got sin in your life, confess it, repent of it, and be ready to meet your Lord. Now, if you aren't saved, if you aren't saved, what should you do? What should you do as you see these birth pains going on, this beginning of sorrows? Repent. Turn from your sin. Turn to Christ, believing and receiving him with all your heart. And please, please, don't, don't put it off a moment. Don't procrastinate because the time is short before it will be too late. Too late. And if you do that now, his arms open wide to receive you and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness and write your name in the Lamb's book of life. Folks, the beginning of sorrows are here. We're seeing it. We're seeing it all around us. Be wise and heed the warning of God. Be wise and accept the love that he offers you. Be wise, because either destruction or salvation is just ahead. It's just ahead. I want you to stand with me, heads bowed, eyes closed. How many of you can put 
a clock in your head. I want you to do that right now. In your mind's eye, can you hear it? Can you see that second hand? Tick, 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 tick. Every tick of that clock is bringing us closer to the end. Closer to his coming. When that hand reaches that point that only God knows, then Jesus will rapture his church and the tribulation will begin on this earth. We don't know when it is. It may be just a few ticks away or it may be days away or months, but it's coming ever closer. With every tick of the clock. Do not put it off. Do not. Do not procrastinate. You come to him now. He's waiting. With love in his arms for you. He's waiting. With tears in his eyes for you. If you'll just come to him. Every head bowed. Every eye closed. We invite you to come right now. Won't you come? For whatever reason, if you've got lost loved ones, how can you stay away? Won't you come?